Welcome. It's Friday, November the 17th, college basketball tip-ball show here for Friday night as we head into the weekend. I am Steve Merrill, and I'm joined by three of the best college basketball cappers at wagertalk.com, Jeff Michaels, Brian Leonard, and Rob Vino. And guys, we have a loaded, big college basketball card. You know, Fridays are always small cards in the regular season, but here preseason, we've got a lot of neutral site tournaments, and some really good games to talk about. We're going to do a big game breakdown from each capper and also a best bet as well on the way out. To get things started tonight on Friday, we're actually going to look at the late night game at 11.59 p.m. Eastern. We can't say midnight Eastern because then it's a Saturday game, and we all know Rob Vino gets extremely confused with his calendar when that happens. So, Jeff Michaels, let's have you talk about this game instead. Late night special, degenerate special, some might say, in Brian Leonard's Las Vegas, Nevada, T-Mobile Arena. Probably the best game on the board tonight, but we got to wait a while, right? Xavier and Washington tip it off late. Yeah, you got it. Like you said, there's an exciting day of basketball. It's already going on. It's already started 11 a.m. Eastern, and it's going all the way till 11.59 p.m. Eastern. And, you know, this Xavier Washington matchup, like you said, is going to be an exciting one. But both these teams have really kind of clicked back into reality. I mean, you look at what they both did offensively in their first game of the season. Xavier shot over 57%. Washington shot over 62 percent you know now both these teams are coming in with a few days of rest but you know that does fare better for the Washington team I think as opposed to Xavier when you look at traveling across the country from Cincinnati over to that Las Vegas T-Mobile arena out there and this Xavier team I have to be leaning towards them because they're 18 and seven against the spread versus teams over 500 in the last two years. And they're eight and one in line in games line between plus and minus three. So they're winning those games by over five points per game. And they're coming away in those games that are anticipated to be close. But I really think that the best look here is going to be taking a look at this total. You know, something I really like to look at early in the season here in college basketball is how well these teams have been tested. You know, we see a lot of these big name teams playing Division three, Division two or lower Division one schools, whatever it may be, as almost preseason or warm up games like we call them. But, you know, this Washington team is number two in the nation in experience despite not playing much to start the year in terms of competition, whereas Xavier doesn't quite have that long-term experience, but they're already coming off of a big game against Purdue, obviously, that is one of the best teams in the country and that obviously has tested them early and gives them a little bit of an edge in my advantage or a little bit of an advantage in my opinion. But, you know, I have to be looking at the under here. Like I said, these teams have kind of snapped back from where they did off where they put up offensively in the opening game of their season. But the biggest thing that stood out to me here is the fact that both of these teams are shooting and scoring a big majority of their shots and or points from inside that three point line. You know, we have one of the higher totals that we've seen for this Washington team already this year. And both of these teams are shooting over 65% of their shots from inside the three-point line. Xavier has put up almost 61% of their points from two-point range. And Washington isn't far behind, almost 59% of their points. That does add, obviously, the free throw line and the three-point line. So there's a little bit of a variance there from where their shot percentage is coming up. But two teams like this that you know, are really fighting with their experience, Washington long-term, Xavier short-term, but a lot of, you know, emphasis on scoring and shooting from inside the arc is really going to make it hard to put up a 153-point total, in my opinion here, especially when Washington has already started to trend under a little bit in a couple of these games, and now you're looking at a total that's 20 points higher than most of the games that they played to start the year. So there is some anticipation that there's going to be some scoring, but I do think that that's a little bit of an overvalue there on that line with these two teams that are scoring pretty consistently from inside that three-point line. So I'm looking at this game tonight to stay under the total and be a little more of a defensive battle here tonight. 
And once again, that's the late night game at 11.59 Eastern tonight on Friday. And we have seen a little bit of money actually push that total off to 154 now in some spots. Checking the Wager Talk live odd screen. It looks like it's moving up a bit. So getting a little extra value now, Jeff says, with the under 154 in that game. Xavier currently about a two and a half point favorite as well. All right, that game was in Brian Leonard's Las Vegas, Nevada. But Brian's going to go to Oxford, Mississippi, I believe, here to look at this next game. Uh, and that is Ole Miss playing as a favorite against Sam Houston State. And, Brian, we've seen some money come in on both Ole Miss and on the under in this game. Open seven up to nine and a half now. Total opened 136 down to 133. Uh, do you agree or disagree with either of those moves? Yeah, if this was last year, uh, this would be a totally different situation. But uh, Sam Houston State last year, terrific team. Uh, I think they're going to take a step back a little bit this year. Mississippi's a team that's on the rise. Uh, you know, take a look at the Bearcats of Sam Houston State. They've started the season one and two straight up and against spread. The only victory came against a Pacific team that just lost to Nevada two days ago, 88 to 41. That's not looking good for this team. The two losses they had were both by spread margins of 14 and seven and a half points. So this is the Sam Houston State team who last year was a big surprise. And uh, this year, this is a team that uh, I think we can take advantage on. A lot of times, people will look at how a team did the year before and base their uh, handicapping this year on it, especially if they bring back a lot of starters. Um, I think we've gotten to the point where we've seen enough evidence that most of the time, if you have a really good team and you bring back all your starters, you're going to be overrated. And I think that's the situation we have here with Sam Houston State. But despite the bad showing, you know, the same Houston defense is expected to be a major strength this season. They were very good a year ago. The only problem is this is a team on the small side, so rebounding has to be a key to success. Uh, and moving over to Conference USA this year will also be an adjustment here. So they got a lot going on here with the Sam Houston State team uh, that I think is going to struggle for a while until the, the line move. Like you said, the line moved two and a half points already. So maybe people are seeing the same thing I am here, but. Uh, We'll see if we can still get some value on this. But Mississippi has gotten off to a 3-0 and start, but they failed to cover every game. Uh, we expect that fact, the fact that this opponent, who they're playing today, won 26 games a year ago to fire up this Ole Miss, the Ole Miss players in this game and get a cover out of them. Uh, Chris Beard was just brought in to change the culture here in uh, Mississippi. People in Nevada, people here in uh, Las Vegas know all about him. Um, we were so excited to sign him a few years back and within, what was it? Three days a week, he decided to leave and go somewhere else. Um, but he's a guy that's in uh, a lot of demand. Now he's had some personal problems, which, um, his wife, there was, there was some stuff going on, who knows, but there was never any charges made, but he lost his last job because of that. So I think it's a coup for Mississippi to be able to bring him in here. Uh, the rebels won 12 games a year ago. And Beard's been very successful coach. So I expect a big jump up from the Rebels this season. Uh, this has been actually a highly anticipated game for uh, Mississippi and their players because they're playing in the uh, Tad Pod, and which was a place they played 700 games in the past. A lot of these young players from this Mississippi team actually talked about it and they said, We're so excited to be able to play where all these great players have played before. So uh, you got a Mississippi team who I think is the better team here on the rise against a team that's on the decline a little bit, but you also have a motivated team in Mississippi, who, as I mentioned, has not covered a game yet this year. Playing in this game tonight, I think is once one of the reasons why this line has moved. I like Mississippi here. If you can lay 10 or less, I think it's still a good play. Brian Leonard says, take a look at Ole Miss to get their first cover of the season. That goes at 9 o'clock Eastern. And not only uh, has Ole Miss gone 3-0 straight up, 0-3 ATS, but they're also three and out of the under in those three games. And, uh, you know, Brian mentioned the opponents that Santa Houston has played. Now they are 36 and a half percent shootings come against teams that allow 42 and a half percent. Ole Miss is allowing 39%. So yeah, it's going to be tough. I think for Sam Houston to score. That's why we've seen some money coming in an Ole Miss and the under in this game tonight on Friday. Last but not least, Rob Vino, we've gone to Las Vegas. We've gone to Oxford, Mississippi. I think you have the best destination though, for the big game breakdowns and that's Nassau Bahamas for this one tonight on Friday, and this game tips off at 6 p.m. Eastern, so it's the earliest of the three. 
Kansas State, Providence, two and one K State, three and zero Providence. Pretty good matchup here tonight, Rob. What are you looking at in this one? Yeah, Stephen. I think when you handicap this one, you almost have to take one side of the fence because it's such a uh, you know different contrast, uh, different styles in contrast here, right? That Kansas State wants to push the tempo, no question about it. Number twenty nine in tempo in the country, and Providence. They want to prefer more half-court sets. They want to be more methodical. They want to play defense. They want to shoot twos rather than threes. So, you know, you almost have to ask yourself which side you think will control tempo here. I generally, in a matchup like this, try to just play it down the middle. K-State's going to have their runs where the game picks up. Providence is going to have their runs where the game is slow and it's it's in the half-court with a lot of defense being played. So I'm going to look at it that way. The most similar matchup to Providence that K-State has faced so far this year was USC. But, you know, Providence and USC, both strong defensively, both like the slower tempo, both like to shoot, like I said earlier, twos rather than threes. That game wound up, I think, at 151 final score um, as far as total is concerned. Not so sure that Providence will play as quick as um, USC did in that game. That wound up being a 77-possession game. USC and the NFL kind of fell into a little bit quicker pace. There were some free throws in that game, I think 43 total. Um, Some of that due to the fact that it was a close game in the end. But again, the tempo is going to be huge here. I think Providence can control it enough. And then the biggest factor of all, even beyond the tempo, is going to be turnovers here. Providence has not been good at taking care of the basketball, despite their early success winning games. As far as turnovers are concerned, they're the 22nd worst team in the country. And K-State, obviously, their propensity, their defensive asset, let's put it that way, their best asset is to take the ball away from you. So you've got to have good play out of the Providence guards here. For that reason, I do think they'll try to slow it down. And for that reason, K-State's going to try and pick them up. Uh, There's other factors that you could consider in a game like this. Like you said, Steve, it's Nassau Bahamas. Is the shooting venue good for both of these teams? It's their first time in it. Uh, This particular group of each team, who knows? I also think Kansas State gets somewhat overlooked early on as a defensive team. You know, Providence, defensive efficiency, if you're going by Ken Palm numbers, is number 43 in the nation, which is really, really good. Number 42 is Kansas State. So they're right there on par with Providence early. And again, once you start weeding out strength of schedule and all that other stuff, it just melts down to personnel against personnel. I think that Kansas State has gotten three teams to go pretty quick, three teams that don't want to go quick. I think the three teams that they played are either 190th or lower in tempo in the nation. So can they get Providence to go quick? It's going to be the question here. One of the questions here, Kim English has certainly taken the reins from Ed Cooley and has Providence looking like the same style of team. Ed Cooley left him. So for them, I think you can be guaranteed what you're going to get. A couple of reasons why I'm going to play under 146 and a half here. And the first starts within the USC game. And again, that's the game I'm using as my measuring gauge for Kansas State's ability here. In that game, USC shot 65% from two-point range. I don't know that Providence, even as good as they are, would shoot 65% tonight. So that should cut down some points here. To me, this thing looks like it has a ceiling, an absolute high of being a 74-71 final. If that's the best you can get, that's still under 146. I think it'll be a little bit lower. I'm going to try it that way. I just don't think Jerome Tang's team is going to be able to turn this into an up-and-down pace game. And even when they did, guys, uh, against a similar opponent, USC, it still only got to 151 with 77 possessions. So I like under 146 in this one between Kansas State and Providence. That's Rob Vino talking a little uh, early evening game, 6 o'clock Eastern in Nassau, Bahamas between K-State and Providence. And, um, yeah, that USC game was interesting, Rob. You know, you mentioned the USC likes to slow it down. K-State lost 82-69. They got a shot 52-31%, to but it was the opening game, so we'll see if uh, their shooting's any better tonight, but their defense struggled in that game earlier this season. All right, those are three big game breakdowns. We covered coast-to-coast, even a little bit of Caribbean there, and we also covered from early to late. Uh, Let's look at the three best plays for tonight, though, from our cappers. And just a quick reminder, 
uh, this weekend, college football Saturday, NFL Sunday, NBA college basketball on a daily basis as well. Not a bad time. Check out wagertalk.com. And don't forget to check out the free plays as well. Numerous free plays posted on numerous Capper's pages each and every day. Great way to build your bankroll as well this weekend at wagertalk.com. And Jeff Michaels, I'm going to throw it back to you. And let's start it off with a little best bet here for Friday Night College Basketball. Yeah, you know, I have to give props to to Jacksonville and, and what they've been able to, you know, kind of do already to start this season. But my best bet is going to be on Pittsburgh laying this 14 and a half tonight. And I think it's simply a case of anything you can do, I can do better. And, you know, Jacksonville has actually really stood out in two categories, in my opinion. They're one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country. Uh, By percentage-wise, they're grabbing almost 42% of offensive boards, 17th in the nation, and their top 100 in three-point percentage on the year, shooting over 36% as a team. And being able to do that as an entire unit is impressive. But... Taking a look at Pittsburgh, they really hold every edge on the offensive side of the ball when they are going to be in possession. I mean, they're top 40 in adjusted offensive efficiency. They're 25th in effective field goal percentage, and they're top 20 in two-point percentage. So really getting it done at multiple levels, and one of their biggest issues, or one of Jacksonville's biggest issues in this game is going to be the fact that Pittsburgh is top 10 in average height across their roster. So they definitely have some length on both sides, you know, front court and back court aspect. And those second chance opportunities aren't going to come around for Jacksonville like they have in their other games. I mean, Pittsburgh top 20 in offensive rebounding percentage allowed and top 80 in three point percentage allowed. So They do have the answer to both of the success stories that really have come out of Jacksonville so far, in my opinion. But, you know, laying those kind of points is something that I'm hesitant about sometimes with these teams coming into these games. But Pittsburgh has proven over the last two years that they're capable of handling a double digit line and they're capable of blowing it out of the water for that matter. I mean, last two years, eight and one against the spread is a double digit favorite. And not only are they covering those games, but they're winning those games by 24 points per game on average. And that number improves to seven and O against the spread when they're a favorite of 12 and a half or more. So, you know, it is a a difficult situation for teams to grasp sometimes, but Pittsburgh's been able to prove that they can do it consistently. Plus, 14 and 5 against the spread at home in the last two years, and they're winning those games by this line as well. And that doesn't even take into account whether being a dog or a favorite, you know, you're playing against a slightly lower level opponent when you look at their conference competition over the last couple of years. And a 14 and 5 ATS record at home is something that definitely stands out to me there. You know, I think they have the edge on both sides of the ball, like I mentioned, and I'm definitely not afraid to lay some extra points here with Pittsburgh. So I'm going to lay that 14 and a half more than I have with some of the other teams to start the year. It's Jeff Michaels. He said, if you're going to play it, you better lay it with the Pitt Panthers tonight on Friday. That game tips off at 7 o'clock Eastern. And I'm going to turn it over now back to Brian Leonard as well. Brian, got to look at another nice matchup here tonight between Maryland and Villanova, uh, two premier blue blood teams, you could say. Uh, what are you doing with this game tonight that goes at 8.30 Eastern? This is a very similar handicap to my big game breakdown where I, mo- I happen to have a game in which I'm looking to fade one team and play on another. And that's the situation we have with Maryland visiting Villanova. Uh, the Terrapins under play off back-to-back losses to Davidson and UAB. The lone victory came in a non-covering fashion. Uh, But this is a veteran team off a terrific season a year ago. And very similar to the other game we spoke about, that's good. I think this is going to be a lesser season for Maryland here. Uh, I've had the chance to watch them a couple times, and I really don't like the way they play. Uh, They have not impressed me at all. Uh, If you take a look at last year, they didn't shoot the ball well from distance. And I think this team's even going to struggle to reach last year's expectations. I don't like uh, the offense on this Maryland team. 
uh, because of those issues, this is a team that I'll be, uh, I think is going to struggle all season long to extend leads. You've got to be able to hit uh, three pointers. So I think Maryland's going to be in a situation where they're either going to get blown out or they're going to pull off some upsets because uh, without the hit, being able to hit the three pointers, uh, it's going to be tough for them. Uh, Villanova, on the other hand, despite being two and one, uh, they just lost to Penn as a double digit favorite. Uh, local school in that same, same uh, Philadelphia area. Uh, that's going to wake them up a little bit. They are coming off of a terrible season where they didn't even make the big dance. That's something that is a real shocker for this team over the last 20 years as Villanova has been a mainstay. In fact, they've been a mainstay in the Sweet 16. Uh, Kyle Neptune is their new coach from last year. It sounds like a cartoon character. Uh, if I was going to be making cartoons from space space cartoon, I'd name a character Kyle Neptune. I think that's pretty cool. But uh, he hit the transfer portal hard, and the result is one of the most veteran teams in college basketball. Uh, as I mentioned, we expect a big rebound out of the Wildcats this year. And while we have major questions about the Terrapins, it's tough to find a weakness on this Villanova squad. Very deep team. After hitting the portal, I believe they're one of the most uh, veteran teams in college basketball. And I learned this from years ago, speaking to Mark Lawrence when it came to college football. He said, if a traditional team that is done very well has a terrible season, he says, I like to back that team the very next season because uh, they don't stay down for long. I think we get that value here with the Villanova team who was not good last year. And uh, so the value here, as opposed to the other game when I had to lead a little bit more Laying six here, I think, is a bargain with Villanova. Brian Leonard says also, if you're going to play it, lay it with Villanova. Laying the short number minus six tonight. That goes at 8.30 Eastern against Maryland. And last but not least, Rob Vino finishes off here. Let's look at another game that you think has some value. And by the way, Rob, I got to laugh because I told the producers a couple of minutes ago, I go, I'll try to throw in a free play as well. And this is actually the one I sent them, and I forgot you were using it. So I fully endorse the free play that Rob Bino is about to give here. Uh, give it to him, Rob. Well, we're going to look at the UNLV at Pepperdine game tonight and play it over the 150 and a half here. Um, or, you know, early results. And again, both Jeff and Brian have alluded to schedules being weak early on. So it's real hard to take um, the early final scores seriously, right? You have to kind of weed through that and get to the bottom of things. Pepperdine, of course, under Lorenzo Romar, a high octane team. They go 19, eight and one to the over last year. Um, let's take a look at what these teams have done. That's kind of relevant though, so far this year. And if I start with Pepperdine, big question here for UNLV is going to be, can they play enough perimeter defense right now? Pepperdine's come out of the shoot shooting really well from three number 47 in the country. As far as three point percentage is concerned, UNLV number 276. In three-point defense, that's not a matchup that bodes well for a team like Pepperdine or for a team like UNLV, whose opponent will have a lot of open floor opportunities, walk-up threes, stuff like that. Um, the Pepperdine tempo, of course, they're 39th fastest team in the country. Now, when we go through the two games UNLV played, they played Southern U. They rank 113 for their conference. They do like to run in that game. UNLV winds up giving up 85 points. That team is 113th in tempo. So Pepperdine at 39, 85 points is not a good look for the UNLV defense whatsoever. I think Pepperdine is going to get their share here, Steve. Um, in their case, they played a couple of stiffs as well. They play LIU and Lafayette look real good defensively, give up 53 points. However, push comes to shove. They go and play Cal Davis, who plays at a snail's pace, number 306 in tempo. And what do they do at Cal, uh, against Cal Davis? They give up 79 points. So, again, both of these defenses are questionable against opponents that sort of match up um, at least style-wise with the teams they're playing here tonight. I think one last key here, um, local guy, Liberty High School, DJ Thomas, the new point guard for um, UNLV. He's been asked so far this season to play 90% of the minutes that the team has played true freshman playing 90 minutes and he was as highly touted as it gets, but against a team like Pepperdine, it's going to run, run, run. You wonder if he doesn't wear down a little bit in the end, his defense gets even worse. Um, maybe UNLV has to substitute there. I just think you start adding up all these elements 
and no Pepperdine's, not even Pepperdine's history. Let's just say Lorenzo Romar's history, because we can trace him back through Washington and every stop he's had. All he does is run fast break offense and play very little defense. I think that's the case tonight. Combine both of these teams together. I think you'll get over 150 and a half points. Rob Bino likes over the total between UNLV and Wisconsin tonight. Or not UNLV and Wisconsin. He likes UNLV Pepperdine. And yeah, Pepperdine played extremely fast last year. Play extremely fast this year. And what jumps out to me, Rob, the reason I agree with this play was that UNLV was top 70 tempo last year. They've been a lot slower this year if you look at the rankings. But I think they'll get a chance to run tonight. And they'll enjoy running and playing up to their nickname here. So yeah, running Rebels, Pepperdine over the total. And since I tried to steal Rob's free play, but he'd gotten to it before I did. I'm going to look at a game that's even bigger, Rob, and even bigger over for everybody out there. Uh, that was going to be Iowa my Hawkeyes, place. Steve. We had to talk about it. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> we, we had to talk about this for a couple of reasons. First, first, what's that? <laughs> I said that was going to be my play. You like it? <laughs> I'll endorse your play, Steve, since you endorsed mine. Awesome. Well, there's a couple of reasons I wanted to talk about this. First of all, we saw a monster move on this total. I mean, it's already the biggest total on the board. It's gone up six points today. It opened a 167 range, and it wasn't big enough. And we talk about this a lot in football and basketball and other sports. You know, usually the biggest totals go over, the smallest totals go under. And I thought it was so ironic that the all Iowa Hawkeyes basketball team has the biggest college basketball total on the board when their football team for each of the past four or five weeks in a row has had the lowest total on the board. And every one of those games keep going under. They can't set those college football totals low enough. And I'm not sure they could set this total high enough, guys. First of all, Arkansas State was one of the 20 slowest teams in the country last year, but they have a new coach this year. It's not the case. And they are playing horrendously bad defense. In fact, three games so far this year, they've given up 90 and a half points, 55% shooting from the field. And they're now playing an Iowa Hawkeyes offense that was the fourth best in the country last year's top 10 again this year put up 110 and 98 in their first two games. And now it's coming off a loss in which they got outscored 92, 84 to Creighton. Uh, they're going to run and gun here. Yes. It's a 20 point spread, but the last time they were a 20 point favor was in week uh, game one against North Dakota. That was the 110, 68 game that got over this total. Um, I don't think they can set it high enough. Uh, it's moved six points and it's still not where it should be. Arkansas state and Iowa over 173 uh, should be a barn burner tonight. And they're going to literally, quadruple five six times what the football team will probably do all season in one basketball game tonight so it's pretty entertaining to watch and a quick reminder best bets are available all weekend at wagertalk.com um, i've got another strong nba best bet we've been on fire in the nba tonight on friday college basketball saturday nfl sunday don't forget to hit hit subscribe and hit that bell for instant alerts tons of standalone preview videos for all the football games this weekend daily nba nhl and college basketball preview videos started today on friday as well also, my top 25 videos live here on Wager Talk TV. Check out my page, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, and also check out Jeff Michaels, Brian Leonard, and Rob Vino as well. Comment below. We read the comments. We reply back. Let us know your thoughts tonight on Friday and this weekend as well. And be sure to stay tuned right here to Wager Talk TV for more great college basketball, pro basketball, college football, pro football content coming up next. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you again soon.